She does it every time. I say, Susie, this is the day the fish are by. Good. We want to continue on this uh, move that we have on about our salvation, how important it is. And here's why I'm doing this, folks. I'm out here in the community and I'm talking to people every day. And everybody I meet says they're Christians. I've, had, I've been here almost seven years and I've had four people that's told me that they were not Christians. Four people of everybody I met. I used to do a hundred a month. I used to go out and talk to a hundred people a month. And more, really. A lot of times. I, mean, I think one, one month I did like 300 and so. And um, everybody I met, I thought, well, Lord, what? Why am I here trying to get people? If they're everybody saved, you know, well, all right, you know, what are we doing? And here's what people don't realize: just because you pray a prayer or say, Lord, I, I trust you, and I want, to, I have faith and believe in your Jesus, and all this, doesn't automatically make a person. Christian. Why do I know that? Because the Bible is full of that and, and talks about not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter in. Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. Salvation is a personal relationship with Jesus. You'll not find the sinner's prayer in the Bible. We, we talk about that. You know, that we say, you said the sinner's prayer, you're saved then. We do not, and it's, and it's, listen, I'm taking blame for that, okay? As a preacher, I have not explained that well enough over the years, and I've had to repent of that, and ask God to forgive me for not explaining what it means about becoming a Christian to people. Um, you know, just, I mean... A true Christian just won't continue living like they like. I'll give you an example. I think Jerry and Tim heard me say this. I was witness to a man and talking to him. And he said, Well, I'm a Christian, but I just don't go to church. I, I just don't, you know, I don't think we're to church. I said, So you're a practicing atheist, right? You live, you say you're a Christian, but you act like an atheist. Because the Bible does teach it. We as Christians are supposed to assemble ourselves together. Jesus, church is mentioned over a hundred times in the Bible. Jesus died for the church. That's his bride. And you think about how important that is. That's it. We're the church. We're, she's her, uh, Jesus' bride. That's what she is. She's always referred to as a she of the things that we do. Because it's the bride of Christ. We're the bride of Christ. So to say that it's not important or to say I don't think I need to come is a slap in the face of Jesus. And how can a person who's saved or saved led by the Spirit of God? Because you cannot get saved unless the Holy Spirit of God leads you to do that and, and baptize you in the Spirit. You're, you're, you're not saved outside the Holy Spirit. Uh, 
so, and he would never lead a Christian to say that. He would never lead a Christian to say, well, you don't have to go to church. You don't have to be wrong. You don't have to read the Bible. You just, you know, I'm saved and that's all I care about. Uh, so, and we're going to look what James, what the Bible says about it. Okay, so in the book of James, if you have your Bibles, you turn in the book of James. And we're going to continue that because I'm going to, I'm going to war over this, folks. Because I don't want people who think they're saved living like the devil, acting like the devil, and say they're and, and go under a false thing that they are saved. I want to, I want them to get saved. Uh, I want them to go to heaven. I don't want them to miss heaven. I want them to be saved. So let's look at uh, in James chapter two, begin with verse fourteen. Uh, James is going to give us. Um, Straight instructions and what it is about uh, salvation. He says, What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he had faith and have not works? Can faith save him? That's the question that he's asking to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. James is writing this and asking, just, Are you just saying you just have faith? Is that all you're saying you have? Now, make no mistake, we are saved. By having faith in what Jesus Christ has done. You cannot work for it, okay? There's no such thing as work salvation. So I'm not uh, teaching or trying to say somebody has to work to be saved or keep their self saved. I, I know people who uh, are trying, well, I hope I go to heaven. I'm still working. I'm still, I hope I work. I work, I work, I work my way in. That is a false teaching. Because you, you couldn't do enough if you was perfect every day from the, the time you got saved to the time you died to make up for that. Because what, what are you going to do with the sin that happened before that? I have a real good illustration of that. My dad and mother had a, a store. And every time the mines would go on strike, they would carry the community because they couldn't go down to the Payless or the people Wiggly and, and buy stuff on credit. So they would come to our store and they'd say, Mr. Robbins, Ms. Robbins, can y'all carry us to the strike? My mother did always say, yes, yes, we'll carry you. Well, as soon as the strike was over, uh, nine out of ten of them did not pay my mom and dad again. When they quit the store, they, they had bills that had people's names on it was stacked over that high of just little thin, you know what little thin you ride on, you know? Some of them that high, the name on top here, back years and years ago. My dad said to my mother, I'm there with them in the store. It's the last day they're going to have the store open. They shut the doors, lock it up. That's the end of the thing. So they, they're just doing a little inventory of things. They pull out their Moore's potato chip boxes. You don't even know how big a Moore's potato chip box is. It's huge. And there's people that owe them money from all over the years. My dad drove them over there to the warm morning stove and he said, uh, Now, Alice, my dad is always funny. He said, uh, You know they're not going to pay this. And there's no use us trying to collect it, no use us keeping these around. Let's just forgive them this debt and burn them. I watched my dad and mother sit there on the milk crates. Some of y'all may not know what a milk crate is. <laughs> uh, but they sit on milk crates at that, uh, with the more and more stove and they'd throw so many in that would burn up and then they'd throw so many more in and that would burn up. And they was talking back and forth. I was just sitting and listening. I was married and uh, uh, Susie and I were there at that time and we, we watched them do that. And my dad said, we just have to forgive them with that debt because they're never going to get it. Well, if they were to come back and say, before that, and say, we know we owe you, Mr. Robbins. We know we owe you, Ms. Robbins, but let's forget about that and let's start a new thing and I'll pay up for what I get now. That's trying to work your way in to salvation. That's what people try to do by working their way in. But why would James say this is faith alone without works on it? Because the Bible teaches us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, 
that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. The good works that we do as Christians is just the bonus of our faith that we have. What I believe about Jesus, what you believe about Jesus, what you believe about God, what I believe about God, what I believe about the church, what you believe about the church, will tell us how dedicated and submissive we all are. To, if you have a high uh, respect and love for God and everything, you, you, everything else will have a high respect and love. In I always tell young men, uh, find you a wife that loves the Lord and is saved and loves the Lord more than you. Young women, find you a man that's saved and loves the Lord more than you because if you don't find that, then you'll never know what it is to really be loved. Uh, and that's the way that is, and that's how it is. So he says... Uh, in your, if you have no works, can faith save you? See, so you can see that faith and works go together. They're not two separate things here. It's, it's, people try to make it two separate things. Well, I have faith, and that's all I have to have is just faith. I don't have to have no works or nothing. But no, it, it, the, 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 your faith proves that you work it. That's found in the, uh, Philippians. Philippians says that, to prove that. Then it says, uh, verse 15, it says, If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding you give them not the, those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? He's using this as an example to say, if you say you just have faith and no works, he said, compare that to somebody coming up that needs something, you say, uh, go in peace. Did you help them people? No. Did, did it have profit anything? No. Same way with Christian who has no works. With their Christianity, it does not profit. Because how do I know he's talking about that? Verse 17 explains that. Look at verse 17. Even so faith, okay, if it had not works, is dead being alone. You see. So the example that he gave us about if you was to take if somebody was come to you that needs something and you could give it to them and you don't, all you say is peace. All you've spoken is words. Same way if, if you if people who say, Well I, I accept the Lord the Savior, I believe, but they have no works, it's the same thing, you see. There's no there's no proof of that in their life. That they really have it didn't profit them. It, there's no profit in, in them just to say, "Well, Lord, you know, I believe." Because we're going to find out who else believes, and believing is just not enough on it. Okay. So, but I'm not teaching work. I'm not teaching you got to work your way in heaven. Okay. I'm not teaching you got to work to keep yourself saved. If you're saved, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit of God, uh, and there's no getting out of that. I've had people here say, "You know." Uh, People do, you can uh, get lost and say the Bible does not teach you any words. As a matter of fact, it teaches just the opposite in Hebrews chapter 6. It says you could not, you could not renew. If you did fall away, you could not be renewed. Uh, now, that's in Hebrews 6. You can write this down or something going to do. And I will read that to you. It said, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Now, to make, be partakers of the Holy Ghost, you have, and that's being saved, folks. I've had people say, Well, you're, they're not saved. Yes, they are. We well, said they just tasted of it. That's the same word or another word that they use for Jesus when he said he tasted dead. Did Jesus die? Yeah. yeah. Same thing, it's a, it's a reality, it's a thing of truly. So it's just talking about people who are saved. And said, I'm tasted of the good word of God and the power of the world to come. If they, if they shall fall away, if it says, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to open shame. Here's what we say. For the foundation of the world God planned for Jesus to die. That was a done deal, folks. When, when that was 
plan that was already as a done deal. It was already accomplished in the sight of God. For someone to say, I was saved and I believe that, that Jesus died on the cross for my sin and call that, that that's your salvation, and then say, I rejected it or I'm not, uh, not saved anymore. You could, according to Hebrews chapter 6, you could never get saved again. Why? He's not going to come and die again for you. You're saying, you're saying that power that he died on the cross wasn't good enough to keep him. And uh, that, that's, and I'm looking at folks that do that. And they say, well, I'm trying to keep myself saved. Can't do it. I don't know. And then they say, well, if you sin, then you're not, then you're not saved. Well, what? You know, every time somebody said that to me, I have never had any of them explain what sin that was. Next time somebody says it, they say, well, what sin is it that caused you to lose your salvation? What sin is it? Because it, sin's a sin. I know there's different degrees of sin, but a, a taking of the fruit was a sin that caused Adam and Eve to die, and us and everybody else. Just taking of the fruit, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be a big deal today. But it's a big deal to God. So if somebody says, well, you and uh, just say, well, what sin is it? And, and it always that always stops me. Every time they've said that to me, it always stops. And then th when they read Hebrews, they try to say, well, th those people really wasn't saved in the first place. Now, all they did was just taste it. Well, how are they made partakers of the Holy Ghost? Because only Christians are made partakers of the Holy Ghost. First Corinthians chapter. Uh, 12, 13, you read that on that we've been baptized into one body through the Spirit of God. So, uh, that's what it is. So, even so, faith, if it had not worked, then it been dead. And then in verse 18, look what he says. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. See, he said, you know, somebody may say, well, I got faith. Others uh, say, well, I got works. Okay, the answer is that. Show me, me thy faith without thy works. He said, I, I want to see your faith without your works. I want to show them. You say you're a Christian, show me. Show me that, that there's no works involved in show me. Then he says, I will show thee my faith by my works. That's what James said. I want to show you that I'm a Christian by what I do, how I live, what, what, how I, I do. And, and live. And we can't do that in, on our own. But uh, God indwells in us to give us strength to do that. Because He's uh, he, the work that He started in us, He's going to finish it. Okay? So it, it's real simple if we just submit. That's what, if we just submit to God, okay, God, what do you want me to do? He'll give you the strength to tell you exactly what to do. If we'll listen, God will let us in on some things, folks. He will. Look at verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God, and thou doest well. He said, that's a good thing. He said, just, I, I've got a picture of, well, I believe in God. And then tell me this. He said, I know I'm going to heaven, preacher. I said, how do you know? He said, because I'm poor. And poor people get to go to heaven. What do you learn? Who told you that? Well, you remember the, uh, it, Jesus said it's harder for a rich man uh, to, I mean a camel to go through uh, I got the back it's easy for a camel to go through an eye and even this rich man getting ahead he said so see I, I, I'm I'm poor I'm a, I said that's not what that's teaching but I said did you read the rest of what it says no all things are possible with God because the disciples said how can that happen how and they was talking about a uh, surgeon needle folks. It wasn't a needle in a wall like they talk about and going through a camp wax to be in a getting on his knees and go for it. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about a real needle. Real eye needle. What that's talking about. And they said, how can that how is that possible? And they said, with he said, with God all things are possible. You see? So rich people can be saved, just like poor people can. And uh, that's but he said, Yeah, I, I know I'm going to heaven because I'm poor. You see, you see, 
what we think, we come with a preconceived idea. And then it says, uh, Thou doest well. The devil also will leave and tremble. <laughs> the devils, the demons. Just believing is not enough because the devils do that. The devils do that. Uh, if you want to read something uh, that's real, real good in the Bible, just take the, the words of Jesus. Get a red letter edition Bible and just read what he said. And, and then you'll come to, you'll skip, there'll be a place where it says that you'll skip. And read that why he said it that or get ready to say it. Uh, I, I promise you, it'll be the best study of God's Word that you've been in. Uh, it'll, it'll really help you to do that. In verse 20, he says, But uh, would I know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? He said, See, God's giving this example like he's having a conversation with someone. And he said, Don't you know that faith without works is dead? There's. It, it, it's, it's no good. It, uh, it, it just doesn't work. Then he gives us an example of faith. In Abraham, verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Read in, in Romans, by faith, it says it was accounted to him as righteousness, what he did. Well, I, why is it saying here then? It says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Why is it saying works you for? I mean, you got to work? No, they go together. Because Abraham heard a word from God. And that's what faith is, folks. Faith is not saying, Well, let's do something. Let's have faith that God will take us through. Did you know that's exactly what Satan tried to get Jesus to do? Jump off here, uh, Jesus. Right here in front of all these people down there. The, the angels will catch you up and you won't even dash your foot against the stone. Well, you see, the trouble with that is that God didn't tell Jesus to do it. Now, would, would it have been faith for him to jump off and do that? No. It would have been disobedience. See, faith, the Bible says, coming from hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith is something that we step out of. See, God told Abraham what to do. And by faith, Abraham did that. Can you imagine when he went up? You cannot find one place in the scriptures about Abraham where he was worried, where he cried, where he growled, or where he said, God, no, let's don't do this. Can we do something else? You won't find that. Because you know what? The Bible says that Abraham believed that God could raise him back up out of, out of the dead. Because he, he told him, Abraham, you do this. And then by faith, he did it. Now, what if, he, what if God said, Now, Abraham, I want you to go sacrifice Isaac. I want you to go take, take care of him for me. Oh. Lord, I, yes, I believe that you could do it. I believe that you could do it. But never did. But didn't go. Didn't take the fire. Didn't take the wood. Remember, his son said, Here's the fire and here's the wood, but where's the offering? All Abraham said, God will provide. Builds the altar, gets ready, ties him up. You won't find where his son uh, run away or done anything either. He just submissive to what was going to happen. Because they were living what was under the will of God. Whatever God wanted to do was fine with them. And that that is that's what they had a relationship with the Lord. And so he said, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac his son upon the altar? We find out the same reading of that. By faith he was justified. So you see that they go together. Faith and works go together. It's hard to say, I love something and then not and then not have grant with you. Now, Susan and I started, I started dating her in the seventh grade, but didn't tell her to the tenth grade, okay? But when I started dating her, if, I would write her love notes all the time. Now, I can't remember one that she ever wrote me. 
I don't know if she did or I can't remember. You didn't do it. No more. I got her love notes and put on every word she know on it and just stick around on it and look on it and you know, I would literally the notes on it. And uh, I'd call her all the time. She called me one time uh, when they moved to Manassas, because I didn't know where they moved to. And we broke up. Not we graduated. Because next day they moved to Manassas. Back in 1970, that was a long, long ways. I might as well have been across the ocean. And so we thought we'd never see one another again. And uh, she called me. Let me know where she was. Guess what I did? I packed a, a, a duffel bag and a suitcase and thumbed up her. Once I found out where she lived. I mean, Manassas wasn't that far after all. And, uh, but one of the five kept us just on the phone and said, you know, I love you. But I never would try to show her or do anything about it. You see, that's the same way with our Christianity. We, we've got to show our work. We've got to, we've got to show while we're saved and the good works. And every Christian has been given a spiritual gift. Whatever spiritual gift it is, if you're not using your spiritual gift, you're hindering, and I'm hindering, if I'm not using my mind, the work of the kingdom of God, the spread of the gospel, the growth of the, of the kingdom. I'm, I'm hindering that. And verse 22 says, See thou how faith wrought with, with his works, or did with his work, faith with his works. And by works was faith made what? Perfect. Perfect. Mm. You see. Isn't that a great thing on it? And then, and then verse 23 says, And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God, and he was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. When that word imputed means, not that Abraham was righteous, but God said, I'm going to see you as righteous. I'm going to count you as righteous. That's the same with you. When you got saved and I got saved, we are not perfect. Now, we might think we are, but we're not. So when I got saved, God said, Gary, I'm counting you as righteous because of what Jesus did, my son did on the cross, covered your sins. When I see you, I'm counting you through the blood of Jesus Christ. I see you through that. I don't know about you, but that just makes me happy. I think that God sees me through the blood of Jesus Christ and not of myself. So I was imputed to him. It was counted to him as righteous. And the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. The Bible also says that the very best I could do would be a stealthy rags to the Lord. The very best. So see, it's not by works we're saved. It's by works that we show that we are saved. That's how we do it. That would be like uh, taking a, a, some, somebody and trying them for murder when they hadn't committed a murder, when they hadn't done anything about it. They said they was going to, but they hadn't done it. Now I think that's even against the law to say that. Uh, because it's, um, if you're not saying you're going to kill somebody, you'll, you'll be in trouble. Uh, but but the, before the act is done, that, that, if to say you're saved by faith, but you have no works, it would be like saying, well, you're a criminal, we're going to put you in jail. I'm not anything yet. I'm not anything. But we, we don't care. We're going to put you in. You just look like a criminal. And if you think we don't, just look at your driver's license. <laughs> Since you see then how that by, by works, a man is justified and not by faith alone. Now this is the Bible speaking something that is what the Bible says, you see. Our works, that, that shows, that proves that our faith. Likewise also was Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and sent them out another way. You remember what she did? They said, here's what's going to happen. She said, y'all have mercy on me when y'all come back. 
Okay, you take your scarlet thread and you tie it to swing it. Anybody that's in this house where this scarlet thread is, we're not going to touch. But if you don't do that, and you don't, they get out, then we are not responsible. She made the faith. She's listed as a faith in there. She's also in the descendants and the ancestry of Jesus Christ. She, if you look her up in Matthew chapter 1, you'll see her name given in, as, uh, in the ancestry of Jesus Christ because of her faith. I, I bet she tied that thing real good. She probably used a sheep head knot. Oh, tied that thing real tight that way. And by faith she did. But one of she said, well, I believe it we didn't tie it. The Bible indicates that she tied it as soon as she let them out. She didn't wait to see them coming. She did it then. So, and, and, and it was by work. She did that. She had works and faith went together. Last verse. Listen to what it says to show. He clo James closes his, his uh, apologetic uh, meaning of what he's defending here about salvation here. He says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. I show this to a lot of people that say they're Christians but have no fruits or no thing that they're a Christian whatsoever. They don't talk like a Christian. They don't live like a Christian. They don't act like a Christian. All they did is say, well, I remember one day I, I believed on Jesus. The Bible said that the devils believe on that and tremble. Just say you believe is not enough. Somewhere down the line, we have did it. A salvation is a lordship thing. That Jesus is Lord of my life, the Lord of your life. That's salvation. That's what I'm. I mean, he he he's not going to have anything less. Um, guess what? I'm through. <laughs> got a question or something before we go because we got a few minutes here and we'll be here an hour. There was a, a, a five, seven, Sunday school today. We were talking about uh, the Sabbath. Seven. And then why some went to church on Saturday and then why it went to Sunday. Yeah, why that's going to be a that's great thing. We don't have singers come next Sunday. Let's let's deal with that. Would y'all be willing to do that? Oh yeah. Got a great answer for that. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. I heard Tim say it, but I never heard nothing else. I mean, I know myself. Okay. <laughs> we did talk about it. I think you missed one Wednesday night when we did talk about it. But if you're looking to see the New Testament church met on the first day of the week. Uh -oh. They started meeting on the first day. They says and on the first day of the week, and on the first day of the week, they were gathered. On the first day of the week, they gave. On the first day of the week, they talked. And then some would even use the word the Lord's Day. Because the count when he came out of the grave. Okay. That's what they would do. All right. But we'll look at it real good. That's a great thing because there's so much confusion about that. It's the only commandment that's not a personal commandment. One is to love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart. Have no other God for Thou shalt not make any great enemies. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. We need to talk about that one day. That means more than just saying words. That means saying, I, I follow the Lord and live like the devil. That's what that's really talking about. It's not just saying words. To take the Lord's name in vain means that you're, you're going in the name of God, but you're not... You, he is not your God. He is not your Lord. That's what that's talking about. And then it says, remember the Sabbath. Uh, remember to keep the Sabbath holy. That was given to the Jews as a sign. And we'll see on the... Uh, we'll, we'll look at them all in front. The, the, the other ones are a personal thing. Moral. They're moral personal things on it. But that one is like covers, okay? 
And uh, someone says, it's, it's rotten stone. But why is it? Why do we meet on the first day of the week as Christians? Because we, we give on the first day that was the Lord came out. That's why we honor that, okay? That's the main reason. But we looked at that, okay? Anybody else? Got something you want? Next time we'll talk about that, okay? And uh, if you want, if you want, like the Holy Spirit, what you know, any question, anything you got on it, that you want to talk about that somebody maybe is asking you, you don't know how to answer good or something, uh, we'll take what the Bible says and look what the Bible says about it. Okay, read it. Exodus chapter twenty gives you those. Now remember that Abraham was before the law. No words in the Bible but during from, from Adam to there that they talk about keeping the Sabbath. And that they had to keep it. Adam was never commanded to. And you won't find it where nobody else was neither. On it gets there to the children of Israel. In Exodus chapter 20. 